Hey, podcast listeners, hope you are well. In this episode, I'm going to be speaking with you about our obsession as humans with labeling. We are born loaded up with labels we didn't choose. Then all through our lives, we have labels offered to us about ourselves and about the world. And these labels create false narratives that lock us into a lesser life. These narratives cannot be broken without the power of self-awareness. Hope you enjoyed this episode. Please comment and subscribe. Even take a screenshot, send me it through a DM. Let's keep in touch. Enjoy this episode. Thanks for listening. The problem from birth for us, guys, is that our consciousness starts to look for identity and definition and meaning and status. From birth, we're introduced into a world where everybody locates each other by labels. So from birth, we are born into labels, first of all, aren't we? We're born into male or female or black or white or colored or English or American or African or rich or poor or whatever the labels are. Before you even take a breath, before you're even born, you have a bunch of labels you didn't choose, you inherit. And you inherit all the baggage that comes with those labels. So from birth, a narrative is being constructed for all of us with no reference to us. And those that are involved in the management of our lives from birth, are the parents or guardians, and then culture and environments and all the rest of it, are all getting busy constructing a certain narrative about us that we never question. Because all that took place when you weren't conscious enough to question. So we get into our adult life like near 22, and I began to question my life for the first time consciously. I began to say, I don't want this for my life. Is there another option? And my self-awareness shouted at me, yes, there is. So from birth, we are obsessed with naming and labeling everything based on other people's narratives, including the narrative of culture, as I said, nationality, skin color, gender, economic status, and so on and so on. We get busy doing all of that and we grow up with this narrative about sex and marriage and intimacy and health and money and aging and God and faith and religion and so on and so on. These labels shape our consciousness. That consciousness shapes our behavior. That behavior and those habits become our temperament and personality an entire worldview. And it's all autopilot, guys. And without self-awareness, you cannot break that barrier of limitation that most humans on the planet, 90% is estimated, have no self-awareness. Guys, this is huge. I want you to be part of the elite 10% and increase the 10% with me. If you want more teaching from me on self-awareness, I've just released a new online video course called Self-Awareness Made Simple. It's available now, but only till the end of October. Go to paulscanlon.com forward slash self-awareness or check out the link in the show notes. Thank you. Because to live your life without even hearing what I'm saying to you now, let alone experiencing it for yourself, without even hearing it, is a crime. It is a crime, but no one's gone to jail and no one's suing anybody, and we should be. It should be a crime. We should be teaching self-awareness in school. It should be basic in school, shouldn't it? Now you hear what this is. In school, we should be taught this so that we get a generation growing up of future parents who get it, and we break the, we break the link of limitation. We break the generational barrier of trapped inside consciousness that I've mentioned earlier, because we taught kids about self-awareness and they had a fighting chance of accessing that level of consciousness earlier in life than most of us ever do. The difference between consciousness and awareness, let me say something about that for a minute before I let you all go. The difference between consciousness, which I spoke about a lot, and awareness. Uh, let me try and explain it to you this way. If I said to you, refrigerator, 
What room in the house am I thinking about and going to speak to you about? Kitchen. If I said to you, bed, what room in the house am I going to speak to you about? Bedroom. If I mention the toilet or the bath or the sofa or the TV and so on, by mentioning the furniture, you know what room I'm in, though I haven't mentioned the name of the room. Awareness is those rooms without stuff in it to decide what room it should be called. Awareness is the level of consciousness that doesn't need labels in order to define something in your life that the moment it's labeled, you forever afterwards call it the kitchen. If you take all those furnishings out of a room and think of a house and all the rooms are empty, are they still rooms with nothing in them? Yes, of course they are. And awareness is rooms, if you like. Awareness is realms of thought. Awareness is a realm of consciousness that does not need labels for it to function. It functions fine without any labeling. That's why the gift of self-awareness, I think particularly as you age, is the freedom from the controlling power of labels that people insist on placing on your life and on my life and that you place on your own life. And self-awareness is the gift of being able to rename the rooms that people have insisted. This is what you call that in your life. This is what we call that person. This is what we call people that do that or people of that skin color or people that come from that country or people at that age and stage of life or people with that lifestyle. This is what we call that you were taught. Self-awareness is the gift to have a room that no one labels for you you get to decide what's that going to be all by yourself. And you begin to realize that you are not your name, you are not your gender, you are not your nationality, you are not your skin color, you are not your brain, you are not your body, you are not your religion, you are not your genetics, you are not your poverty or your wealth, you are not your circumstances, you are not your mistakes or your failures, none of those things all of which start to label spaces in your life and get a narrative around them is not who you are. You can't know that without self-awareness. And because our consciousness is obsessed with labeling, self-awareness breaks you free from the tyranny and the containment and the tethering and the downward gravitational pull of labels that mean actually nothing when you examine them. This is why self-aware people don't like the intellectual laziness that produces stereotyping. Stereotyping is intellectual laziness. People can't be bothered thinking through something complex to come to a more healthy, balanced description or conversation or conclusion. And all around us, every single day, we have been offered stereotypical thinking about stuff we can't be bothered thinking through ourselves. And the more you accept someone else's labeling, the more the rooms in your house become their version of what your life should look like, not yours. And self-awareness is the gift to break free from the autopilot default of whatever they call this, that must be it to deciding for yourself what this is or isn't. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you want to hear more teaching on self-awareness, I've just released a new video course called Self-Awareness Made Simple. This is available only till the end of October, so move sooner than later if you want to get a hold of that. It is five hours of teaching, 20 videos, with a full workbook attached to each section for personal or group interaction with the material. Please comment on today's teaching, tag me into that, share this with a friend, someone that will benefit from it in your world. Again, thank you for listening.